Uh, let's turn our attention to God's word. In Acts chapter 20. Let us pray together as we ready ourselves to read. God, our Father, we thank you again. We thank you for this opportunity today, your day that you have made, that we may be glad and rejoice in it, and more so to rejoice, to know that your spirit is with us today, and that you're teaching us your word, and that you're preparing us and you're maturing us, uh, that we'll be able to be effective in our Christian lives, Lord. So we ask that as we read this word today, that you would speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. So today we have um, this portion of scripture that is going to talk about, you know, a lot of uh, roundabout places that Paul passed by again to... um, encourage the church, encourage the believers, and uh, other places they will not go and they will tell them, you know, I won't see you again, uh, or you will never see my face anymore. <laughs> uh, it, it, it is quite interesting that, uh, you know, Paul has begun to prepare these believers uh, to know that, you know, his, his time is nearing. He's, he's about to go. As David says, you know, I go to the way of, of all the earth, where we all came from. And we're going to go back there. But until then, our service to the kingdom should remain active as we share and disciple other people. So uh, our title for this today will be Made Alive made alive in Christ, so that we'll be effective in um, our sharing of the gospel. It says here in verses one, after the uproar had ceased, Paul called the disciple to himself, embraced them, and departed to go to Macedonia. So this was the uproar that was brought about by Demetrius, you remember him, who was a um, a guy making those little things for Diana and selling them, those idols. And this had slowed down. It means they had given up because they were still after Paul's life. But when that had ceased, uh, Paul really embraced these uh, disciples and departed to go to Macedonia. And now when he had gone over that region, and encourage them with many words, he came to Greece. You know, when, when people are growing older, some of them have a lot of words, a lot of things to say, right? <laughs> you know, young people, they barely have nothing to talk about. The old men who have experienced and they've gone through a lot of things, they always have things to tell you. And younger people don't have the patience to listen, <laughs> to, uh, to, to gain wisdom from those who have gone ahead of us. And uh, it's actually a good trait to cultivate, to always listen, especially to good wisdom and to good men and women who have gone ahead of us. So he spoke there many words. He came to Greece and stayed three months. And when Jews plotted against him, as he was about to sail to Syria, he decided to return through Macedonia. So these people are not relenting, they're not giving up, they still want his life. You know, his, uh, their business is gone down and they're not making a lot of money, so what, the, what are they gonna do? Take the person who caused all this trouble out. But he was notified or he knew about it and he went another way. And so part of the Berea accompanied him to Asia also Aristarchus and Secundus of the Thessalonians 
and Gaius of Derby and Timothy and Tychicus and uh, Trophimus of Asia. This man, uh, going ahead, waited for us in Tro- at Troas. But we sailed away from Philippi, and after the days of the unleavened bread, and in five days joined them in Troas, at Troas, where we stayed seven days. Now, on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, or Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. And he referenced that when he wrote to the first letter to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 16, 2. There were many lambs in the upper room where they were gathered together. And in a window sat a certain young man named Eutychus. I repeat, Eutychus who was sinking into a deep sleep. He was overcome by sleep. And Paul continued speaking. He fell down from the third story and he was taken up dead. (laughs) Let us pause there for a minute. And this is a warning for all of (laughs) you. Do not sleep while I preach or else you will die. And if you die, I ain't gonna bring you back to life. (laughs) You're gonna go one way, one way. So you can do some toothpicks on your eyes if your eyes are failing you. Do something about it, don't sleep, just don't sleep. So this man, Eutychus was, was a young man, He's probably, you know, I don't know what he was doing during the day. He's probably tired. He's probably was walking and doing a lot of things. And, you know, he tried to keep it on past midnight like, Mm-mm, this is not me. <laughs> I'm not used to this. And you see, Paul is, Paul is going to travel just the next day. The whole day he's been preaching. He's preaching the whole night. Like, who, who is this Paul guy anyways? He preaches day and night, day and night. He's nocturnal, he doesn't sleep. He walks every time, he's making tents and preaching to people, and now it's in the middle of the night, and he's preaching the gospel. This young man, probably, he was trying to sit at the window so that he would get some fresh air, so that he would continue speaking. It did not work. You guys know how you know, sleep is the strongest thing in this planet. Don't, don't try to drive when you're asleep. If it comes, please park somewhere. <laughs> sleep, take a nap, power nap for 20, 30 minutes and continue. Otherwise, you're gonna go down. So maybe this man, you know, people would always accuse this young man. You know, you, 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 you're not supposed to live, sleep when we are preaching, when God's word is taught. I don't know his situation. All we know, it was in the night, he's probably listened a lot. Some people don't have the concentration that other people have. So you don't just judge him so hard. Just, you know, be kind and... It might be you. Some of us, we're just sitting for, you know, 45 minutes, someone, and we're out. (laughs) We're out. So you you gotta be patient with this young man. But when Paul went down, fell on him and embraced him, said, do not trouble yourself, for his life is in him. And now when he had come up and had broken bread and eaten, and talked a real, a long while, even until daybreak, he departed. You know, the, the, the most wonderful thing that I picked from here is that we have a situation. And Paul, who is in charge or who is speaking, and there's commotion that someone just fell and is dead. Paul is not even worried. 
In fact, what he did, he went down there from the third story. He went down there, embraced this young man as if he was alive, and he said, his life is with him. It's not a big deal. And he went about preaching again. <laughs> because, you know, when such things happen, you, uh, the, there's a dead man, there's someone healed, and there will be a lot of commotion more than just the death of, of this person. Now the resurrection of it is like, oh, you're the greatest. You, the, Paul is the guy. Paul is this. Paul is this. And swiftly, Paul doesn't want them to think of how great he is. He prays in his heart for this young man. He says his life is with him and he leaves him there and go back to do the most important thing that is to break bread with the brothers and sisters. How wonderful that is to take our focus from these things that would easily entangle us. And do you know this miracle would easily entangle us? That, that becomes our focus. We print flyers and like, hey, you want, you know, you have a dead man in your house? <laughs> Bring them over. Or we can try it, you know, just go to the third floor. Take yourself down. Paul is around. Paul is around town. No, we're going to bury you. <laughs> he ain't going to come. He ain't going to show up. Paul is handling this situation in a very godly manner in a very godly way. Because Paul has been made alive in his spirit, what he cares most about is for people to be made alive in their spiritual life as a part to the physical raising up of someone who is dead. Because you know what? Eutychus never lives again forever. He died again. He's not alive forever. Uh, our Eutychus is in the UK. This one is dead. So if you focus on things that are temporary, what is your life going to be? You know, the things that were so important for you are gone. Are you still going to regard God with high esteem? If you have been made alive, then the things above becomes your central focal point. That these are the things I'm going to center my life upon. The things of Christ. They brought the young man alive and they were not a little comforted. It's like, whatever. You know, Paul even left. He didn't even care. <laughs> like, I was supposed to leave early in the morning. I have been preaching the whole night. I'm going to go. You deal with your situation there. Now Eutychus is there giving a lot of stories. If that Eutychus lived in this generation, do you know how many books he would have written? How many millions of dollars he would have made just because he slept, fell down, and was brought back to life? And that becomes the ministry's point. Then he went ahead to the ship and sailed to Asos. They're intending to take Paul on, on board. For so he had given orders, intending himself to go on foot. Paul just wanted to, to walk and to share the gospel. And when they met us at Asus, we took him on board and came to um, Mytilene. We sailed from there, and the next day came opposite chaos. The following day we arrived at Samos and stayed at Trigalus or Trigalium. The next day we came to Miletus, for Paul had decided to stay, sail past Ephesus so that he would not have to spend time in Asia, for he was hurrying to be part uh, to be a part of the Jerusalem uh, day of Pentecost. So he was in a rush, but even in his rush, he was just from this point to this point trying to encourage all the believers. Every other place he had gone before, 
He's going back again to encourage them. That means, you know, Paul had a really, you know, a fatherly heart. He had a, a heart that wanted to see people grow in the Lord, to grow them in the Lord so that when uh, he's gone, they would continue serving the Lord faithfully. So he chose even not to go to uh, Ephesus. He wanted to, but he wanted to catch up uh, to uh, Jerusalem. From Miletus, he sent uh, to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. And this, the, the, the last portion of this chapter would be very good for, for you know, the, the church leaders or any other person who uh, wants to serve in a local congregation or just leaders in general to have this exhortation given to them. So he sent, instead of going to Ephesus, he did send the elders to come to him. And when they had come to him, he said to them, you know from the first day I came to Asia, in what manner I always lived amongst you. So he sent for the elders and they show up and this is the introductory statement that he gives to them. You know from the first day I came to Asia in what manner I always lived amongst you. And you know, if, if you didn't know the reason why he's calling you, you'll be a little bit worried. You're like, did, did someone say that we're not doing the right thing in the church? Do, do we have other people who are saying bad things about us? And what, what is it about Paul that is beginning this exhortation about how he came to us, about how he lived amongst us, serving the Lord with all humility and with many tears and trial which happened to me by the plotting of the Jews, as is already mentioned in verses three. And you think about it, Paul stayed with the Ephesians for three years. He created a very wonderful bond with them, speaking to them day and night. And he says, you know what manner of a man I was amongst you? I toiled day and night, serving the Lord with humility. You know, when people, when people say they're humble, I don't know what they mean with humility, because humility is not speaking softly, right? Paul was always bold. Paul always was reasoning with people. Paul was always warning people. But in that, he said, I served the Lord with humility. I was not prideful as I do that. I didn't exalt myself beyond the measure I should. I humbled myself and the Lord used me. And you know what he says? He served the Lord with humility and with many tears and trial which happened to me. Many what? Many tears. You know, as a, a, a very few men would, uh, would tell you, hey, you know, we have cried. <laughs> You know, we always tough, you know. Portraying ourselves to be very strong. Which we should. But oftentimes we do not know what happens in people's closet when they're not with us. Paul is saying, they never knew that Paul cried. But Paul said, hey, in, in my closet, I shed a lot of tears. There was a lot of pain, a lot of trials I went through. Maybe other things you guys never knew about. Because if I had maybe shared with you at that time, you guys would have not understood my heart. Or you would have just, you know, started a pity party for Paul. <laughs> this is a pity party, let's pity this guy. He's going through a lot of suffering, a lot of trouble. But nonetheless, he says, there was a lot of tears. And this is evident for every minister of the gospel who 
does right. There are a lot of pain that they have to go through. And there are a lot of tears that they shed when we don't see them. You know what they gotta do? Cry in their closet, wake up, take a shower, oil your face, do it one more time. And do it again, and do it again, and do it again. You think it's never easy? No, it's not. But we gotta do it because he said so. When you see people dressed nicely on a Sunday morning, on a Tuesday at their work, you don't know what people are going through. Be nice. Be kind to people. Pray for people. Perhaps your prayer would help them take some of the burdens away. So pray for people. Pray for your leaders. Pray for the elders. Pray for the volunteers. Pray for the children ministry workers. Pray for everybody. Just pray. Paul said he cried tears and trials up and continued to say how I kept back nothing that was helpful but proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly and from house to house. In other words, the way I shared the gospel, I didn't hold anything back. Whether it would have uh, landed me into a lot of trouble, I was ready to take it. I did not hold back. So you pay attention. In your sharing of the gospel, never hold back. Never say, well, what if they don't believe? What if they'll kill me? What if they do this? What if they hurt me? All these what if are true. They might hurt you. They'll speak bad, uh, about you. They'll say things. But continue doing it. Paul said, I did it publicly and from door to door. <laughs> when they were gathered in public, I did it. I also followed them at their doors. <laughs> Not at their doors and preached the gospel. I mean, Paul was an apostle, Paul was an evangelist, he was a prophet who proclaimed the, the words of God, he was a, a pastor who tenderly cared for the flock. He was all these things. Why? Because he was made alive. Christ lived in him. Friends, if you have been made alive by Christ, your physical death becomes less and less of your concern. Because we know at the end of the day, of the day we will go. I do not know in which manner, but we shall go. You know, people say that time, time is a healer. No, time is a killer. <laughs> it's going to kill you. I mean, what? When you're adding a day or a year to you, are you becoming younger? Your, your body is even giving up on you. <laughs> your back begins to ache. You give birth, you're losing your tooth. <laughs> it's just things happening. They're like, no, when, when I was young, these things never used to happen. What is happening to me? You grow old and things are just not working the way they used to. You're losing your taste. You can't even hear tenor and soprano anymore. You're like, it's just sound. <laughs> your senses are not working. You're growing old. There's an old man who said to David, David wanted to take him with him and say, hey, how am I gonna be helpful to you? I can't even hear the sound of this young man singing. I can't, I can't even smell things. My test is gone. I'm, I'm useless to you. Just take my sons. Paul is exhorting this group of men. He kept back nothing. He spoke, testifying to the Jews and also to the Greek repentance towards God and faith towards our, our Lord Jesus Christ. That was the central message that people should repent and put their faith 
in our Lord Jesus Christ. And see, now I go bound in the Spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testify in every city, saying that chains and tribulations await me. He's, he wants to go to Jerusalem bad, but in every of this city that he's gone through, the Holy Spirit has been telling him, hey, Jerusalem, Jerusalem is the way. But you know what? They're gonna be still suffering there. <laughs> You're gonna be in chains, a lot of trouble. Maybe they'll kill you, you don't know. But a lot of things are waiting for you. You know, this is not the usual gospel that we hear. That when you, when you receive Jesus Christ, everything will say, everything is on a silver platter. You will never go through any trouble. You will not be crying by yourself in your house because you do not know how to fix things in your life. I want to promise you, as the Bible says, that you will go through a lot of troubles. But be ye encouraged that he who overcame them is with you. You're not alone. And the Holy Spirit has told Paul that tribulations and chains await you. And you be, you, if it were me and you and other people would say, God, you haven't considered how I have served you. You haven't considered the years I've traveled by myself in my, in my room. I have served the Lord. I have washed the church. I have helped people. I have done all these lists of things. And this is what I get. God, you're not serious about me serving in the ministry. How would you say that? When you know you've been beaten and all you want is a little peace of mind, a little prosperity here and there, and the Holy Spirit say, a lot of trouble wait for you. This one that, they, you know, they try to take you out, forget about that. More in Jerusalem. You guys don't know about tomorrow, but probably is promising you today that maybe tomorrow there's trouble. But are you gonna trust him who said it? Because Paul says that the troubles that we go through are not for us, they're for other people. And you're asking God, why, why do you want me to go through trouble so that other people would benefit from the testimony? Does it make sense? No, 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 no. Does it have to make sense? No, 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 no. Your mind cannot grasp the things that God sometimes speaks to us. All he wants us to is to obey his word. If you say, God, this direction, please go. Even in suffering, he's there with you. He said, I'll be with you until the end of time. He's with you now. He say he will be with you until the end of your time. Whatever happens in between here, there are a lot of good and bad. In the scripture here, there are a lot of things that are good. There are a lot of things that are bad for my flesh. Because my flesh, the way it perceives things, it's like, no, that, I'm not supposed to do that. I'm not supposed to uh, go through a suffering and tribulation and crying as I'm serving the Lord. And people will say, hey, what kind of God are you serving that is causing you pain? It is the God of the Bible. He's the God of the Bible. Those are not my words. The Holy Spirit spoke to Paul. Let's continue reading. He said, but none of these things move me anyways. Have you guys ever tried to figure out what kind of man Paul is? He said, I have cried. <laughs> I've gone through a lot of pain. And the Holy Spirit said, there's still more, 
But none of these things move me anymore anyways. If I die, to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. So both is gain to me. I'm not worried about it. None of my concern. He said it. He's going to do it anyways. He's not joking. We're not in a joking competition with God. <laughs> if he says it's going to happen, it's going to happen anyways. But none of these things move me. Nor do I count my life dear to myself so that I may f- finish my race with joy. And the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus Christ to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. I don't even count my life dear to me anymore. (laughs) While some of us we are holding so dear to the breath that we have for the next one minute, Paul is saying, I don't hold it dear. But what I do, I count it joy for the ministry that was entrusted to me. What was that ministry? The ministry of suffering and sharing the gospel. Because he was told, bring him on board so that I show him what he must suffer for my name's sake. What did God tell you that you must suffer for his name's sake? Do you know it? Like, no, 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 I don't want him to say it. I don't want to go through trouble. Paul is counting it all joy. And James would say, count it all joy when you go through various temptations and trials. Count it all joy. How you're going to do it, I don't know. But you should. And indeed I know that you all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, will see my face no more. <laughs> this is nearly, oh, actually this is the last word he's speaking to this group of people from Ephesus. You'll not see my face no more. After dropping that bomb, <laughs> Speaking all those things like, hey, you, you, you ain't going to see me no more. And that is kind of adding to their sorrow that they're not going to see Paul no more. You know, I see it when uh, friends would visit us here for one week, for two weeks, and they're about to go home. Oh, there are a lot of tears going around here. People, people don't want to go close. It's like, if I go there, I'm going to... Anyway, why, why, why do you girls do that? You think you're going to take it back inside? <laughs> or it's, it's the, the, the makeup issue? <laughs> yeah. You leave it and there's a mark here. <laughs> Destroying your foundation. <laughs> yeah, it's a weak foundation. You are not going to see me anymore. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I'm innocent of the blood of men, for I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Do you know why there is, the reason why Paul is saying, I am innocent? is because he's brought to them for the three years he stayed with them He did not shun to declare the whole counsel of God. Word for word. That is from Genesis to Malachi. Because the New Testament was not written yet. But the whole counsel as it was available to them, Paul brought it to them. And this is the, 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 the charge that is giving to these elders also to carry on. Present the whole counsel of God to people. For if you don't, you know what is going to happen? 
you're not going to be innocent of people's blood in your head. So everyone who teaches out there and they don't present the whole counsel of God, they're in trouble. That is why the Bible says that those who are teachers, their judgment is a little bit more stricter. Why? If you didn't present to people the whole counsel of God, their blood is in your head. And that is dangerous. <laughs> so for me to save myself from all the trouble, I gotta do it. There are some verses they're like, Lord, how, how do I speak that in the middle of the service? I'm going to do it anyway because they are not my words. It is God's word. Do not shun away. Do not fear. Do not fear, especially warning people. He said he warned people day and night. Do you, do you think people embrace warnings every day of their lives? No, 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 no. We don't like warnings. You want people one time, they see the door, they never show up again. Why? Because it, 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 it goes against your expectation. You just want to go to a place where you will find some itchy, itchy words that are so nice, you know, and encouraging words and, you know, just exhortation and nothing of rebuke and exhortation of any sort. If God's word rebukes you, you find another church. Paul says, I am innocent. You guys should know, should know that. I am innocent because I have presented the whole counsel of God to you. Friends, you know, if, if, if we're not alive in our inner man, it's not going to be easy for us to present the whole counsel of God. I'm just going to pick, you know, the topics I like. Oh, you never speak about this topic, about finance, about uh, mental health. You have a mental problem? I don't know. You, you don't do this, you don't do this, you don't. All we do is to go through the Bible. If the, the Bible does not address your issue, you have a bigger problem that I cannot solve and we cannot solve and I don't know who is going to help you. If the Bible is not sufficient for you, I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know who you're going to trust. But Paul says, I am innocent. I have brought the uh, whole counsel of God. That is from book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse, concept, precepts upon precepts, line upon line, here, there, here a little, there a little, as we go, grow together in the Lord, right? And also, it is not just the, 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 the overseers and the pastors bringing the whole counsel of God, you also have to study God's word. I know we have devotionals that we go through the whole year. Some of those devotionals don't cover quarter of the Bible. Because <laughs> it's just one verse for today, another for tomorrow. You gotta study God's word every day. Don't trust the devotionals more than you trust the whole counsel of God. Even when it's written with great men and women of God, just go through the Bible a few times in the year. It won't kill you. It takes an, a very average reader 72 hours to read the whole thing. Imagine. An average reader. Some of you guys are, can read faster. Especially the SMSs on your phone. You're done. <laughs> and you're typed very fast. You know, your, your pros and your gadgets. You can read that. You can probably put some audio Bible and listen to. Get it a few times a year and see how your life will change. It changes. If it doesn't change, it's because you haven't allowed the change. The whole council. 
Therefore, take heed to yourself and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you O overseers to shepherd the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. Friends, this is not a church that was established by Paul or by any man or by the will of man. He says, whatever position you have, you are an overseer, you're an elder, you're a deacon, whatever you are, it is God who did put you in charge and it is the church of Jesus Christ that he bought with his own blood. You know, my blood and your blood cannot even save one insect, <laughs> let alone saving us. It cannot save us. And he said, this church that God has put you in charge, he bought it. You're in charge of something that you didn't pay for. <laughs> you got to treat it with respect and honor. God has put you in charge. In this church, he bought it. For now, for I know this, that after my departure, savage wars would come among you, not sparing the flock. <laughs> savage wars. They're wars, then they're not ministers of the gospel. And you know the scripture that we read last week in Revelation. They were told, Christ told them that I know your works. You have been good. You, you know those who claim to be apostles and they're not. They're liars. You have not withheld back from serving me, yet I have one thing against you, that you have forsaken your first love. Which means once we were dead to our trespasses and our sins and we were made alive in Christ and we forgot about our aliveness in Christ and we killed ourselves again. We went back to those things intelligently thinking, oh, you know, we, we want a mega church, so we're going to water down the gospel. We're not going to speak about Jesus no more. We're not going to speak about the blood and the death of Jesus Christ and the resurrection. We're just going to keep it low key and just be motivational speakers. Just say things that are itchy, itchy in our ears and go about life when we see people living together who are not supposed to, we tell them, no, 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 don't tell them. You know, just let them be. Encourage them not to go out anymore. No, 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 no. If you're living with your girlfriend, you leave tonight. Buona is was fewer. Is that loud and clear? You're living with your boyfriend. You're sinning. You have a wife, you're eyeing other women, you're sinning. Which other sin do you guys know? Or which other sin do you guys practice? <laughs> oh man. You gotta run away. If you don't, Jesus says, you are forsaken your first love. You once made alive, but you have gone back to the things of the flesh. In fact, Paul says that you, you're perfecting things in the flesh. When he was talking to the Galatians, oh foolish Galatians, who bewitched you? You began in the spirit and you're making things perfect in the flesh. These savage walls will come, not sparing the flock. Also, from among yourselves, men will arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after themselves. So it's not just the danger from outside. It is also the things of people from inside. And you know, it's more dangerous to get them from inside because you have seen these people for a very long time. You have interacted with them. They have spoken things in your life. 
If you're not spiritually minded, you're just going to follow what they say. Yet Paul is saying, there are going to be people from amongst you. You know, the apostles, uh, John says, you know, they were amongst us, but they were never of us. They were not made alive, but they had a show. They can put up a show and you'll be like, yeah, these people are spiritually minded. They'll speak a few things and confuse you with Greek and, and Hebrew and you're like, whoa, 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 what is dynamos? What, is, what are these big, big words they're speaking? If you study those words, you can speak them too. It doesn't say that now if you come with Greeks and all your intellect, then, you know, you're spiritually minded. No. You gotta be watchful for this group of people. See, therefore, as I call the worship team to come, watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears again. He said, I did this with love. I cried because I saw the danger of not warning people. I saw the danger of not being bold. And I've always been bold to people. I've always warned them day and night with tears. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace that is able to build you up. You know what is able to build you up? It is the whole counsel of God. Do not neglect it and say, well, it is tiresome. Maybe I will not uh, understand this. I will not get it. You know, it is God's word. And when you put yourself to read it, the Holy Spirit is going to reveal himself to you. It is his word. And he wants you and I to know him. So keep on. Paul said, I commend you to him who will give you an inheritance amongst those who are sanctified. I have coveted no one's silver or gold or or apparel. Yes, you yourself know that these hands have provided for my necessities and for those who were in, for those who were with me. I have shown you in every way by laboring like this that you should support the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Even when Josh began to speak to us, say, this is, this is the religion that we ought to involve ourselves with, helping people. Not just sitting somewhere wait, waiting for people to you know, to give to us, give to us, give to us. No, 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 no. Change it, and now because you are blessed, say that God blessed me so that I should be a blessing to someone else. But I don't have money. No, he was not talking about money. He say, I have blessed you so that you can be a blessing to people. This past week, you know, how many people have you been a blessing to? Were you a blessing to one person? Two people? How many? Are there people you have prayed for? He said, it is more blessed to, to give than to receive. Than to receive. I want to be in this end where I want to pour out in people's lives. I want to encourage people. 
I want to bless people. You know, uh, as Josh was even uh, encouraging us, you know, be, be, being a house parent technically is taking a responsibility of being a blessing to people who are weakest, people who are helpless. And Paul says, you know, I toiled, I worked with my hand to be a blessing to the weak. And so do you the same. I mean, I'm not going to be here to follow up what you're going to do, but you have to do it. Let the Holy Spirit lead you on how you are going to do it. Be led by the Spirit. And when he had said these things, he knelt down and prayed with them all. These things were so heavy on Paul's heart. He spoke about them, find no strength even to, to remain seated or standing. He went on his knees because he knew that the charge is given to these elders ain't an easy one. This one requires those who have been made alive to continue with this work. And you know what happened? Then they all wept freely and fell, um, and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, sorrowing most of all for the words which he spoke, that they would see his face no more. And they accompanied him to the ship. They took him to the ship. Like, hey, we, we ain't going to see this dude no more. We are not going to hear him speak physically to us anymore. He's given us a charge. You know, sometimes we got to wonder, you know, when we hear such words and such passage, you know, the, the depth of how it heats our hearts. Do we consider it? Do we consider, or we, we only go out with, with the miracle? You know, Eutychus was dead and now he's alive and that is the message we got. He was made alive physically, but the concern of Paul is for dozens and dozens of people to be made alive spiritually. Maybe we have lived in an environment that has really killed our spiritual man. We are not alive anymore. But you know, Christ, through his grace, he, he, he calls to us every week, every, every other day. He wants you to come. Say, come to me, all you who are heavily laden, and I'll do what? I'll give you rest. He wants to give you rest. However painful we might feel like the church, the, these elders uh, of the Ephesian church, they, they wept, they sobbed. And these are men, remember? They sobbed. I pray that they would consider those words. And I pray that even our elders here, our pastors and deacons and servants and all of you would consider these words as an instruction from the Holy Spirit. You don't know about tomorrow, maybe there's suffering, but he's with you. You're, you're an elder here, he commands you to bring the whole counsel of God to people. Don't hold back. You'll go to, for door to door and do ministry, whatever it is that God has called you to do. Do it diligently. Paul cried for this church, for these elders. As we mentioned last week, you know, the, there's no church in Ephesus anymore. If you don't go back to the first love, it will be wiped away. But you may have a face that shows people you're alive, but inside it's dead. We don't want to put up a show. We want the real deal, the raw deal. Let us pray together. 
God, we thank you for your overwhelming love towards us. We thank you for what you have done for us. We thank you for your word. I pray that we will consider those things that you have spoken to us. And may we day by day search the scriptures so that we will live by them and do that which your scriptures or your word and, uh, encourages us to do. Sometimes it's tough, but we know that you are with us. And all the struggles that we go through as a people, I pray that God will be encouraged. Paul says he takes no pleasure even in his own flesh. For the joy of serving the king of kings is far much better than the temporal suffering that we go through as, a, as people in this world. So I pray that we'll be encouraged by these words to forge your head and to do your will. Bless us even as we give to you our finances also. As we just read that it's more blessed to give than to receive. And as we give to this ministry and this local church, we pray that your gospel will be fathered more and more. And we see many people come to the fold. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.